at the end of the comp um, completion of this um, lesson, the paramedic professional student should be able to identify management and describe the treatment of upper and lower extremity orthopedic trauma, identify management of describe the treatment of open fractures, closed fractures, and, and dislocations, identify the management and uh, manage and describe the treatment of compartment syndrome and identify and manage the described or describe the treatment of tendon lacerations, transection, rupture, ascites, and um, plater. No, sorry, patellar. So musculoskeletal basis. So an orthopedic injury is one of the most is one of the major life changing events for some patients. They um, threaten their uh, their lifestyles, independence, and occupation. Other orthopedic injuries are delegated at, as lower pr priority, and careful handling is not provided in the face of more serious injuries, but careful handling can lead to quicker healing times and better outcome. Although not always life-threatening, orthopedic trauma has the potential to develop serious complications with improper management. Therefore, it is important for the paramedic to properly manage patients with orthopedic trauma in order to minimize the potential for serious injuries. So skeletal, musculoskeletal injury systems. So we're gonna be talking about the body's framework, the protection of internal organs, movement, red and white blood cell production, um, orthopedic injuries can disrupt any of these processes. So the, the injuries are going to include fractures, dislocations, sprains, strains, compartment syndrome, um, and typically all are treated pretty much the same. So consider fractures um, to the longer bones um, to cause a hemodynamic compromise. We have your femur. Um, these can be, these have, can hemorrhage severely and have nerve and tissue disrupt, um, disruption, or sorry, destruction. Pelvis, pelvis can, um, can have severe amount of hemorrhage. They can also have nerve and tissue destruction and also internal organ, um, injury. So you have a lot of important organs that sit inside the pelvis. Females have the entire re reproductive system. They are very vascular. Um, both male and female both have the uh, majority of our urinary tract system inside the pelvic region, and um, whereas not necessarily those may not be as vascular as the reproductive system can be, they can cause a huge amount of damage still, either way. Um, spine, you can have some hemorrhage, nervous system di uh, dysfunction, and also paralysis. Whatever, wherever you have a injury to spine, you can have severe vasodilation from that point downwards. So therefore, you, you can lose a patient's entire blood supply in the lower extremities. Skull, uh, sc usually, uh, skull is usually associated with brain injuries. Um, you can have limited room for hemorrhaging, but since the skull is very well structured, it doesn't allow room for expansion. Chest internal injuries, uh, you can have injuries to the heart, to any of the great um, vessels, or respiratory impairment. Uh, when bones are fractured by um, the body's immediate begins a process called restructuring, um, which is the, the fracture, uh, fracture to repair the bones. Bone recur, uh, repair occurs in several stages. So <clears throat> the first stage is going to be the reactive stage. This is where bleeding begins um, immediately into the tissue near the fracture site. The vessel constricts proximal to the wound to stop the bleeding. Within a few hours, hemat uh, the hematoma will form. In the hematoma, uh, fibroblasts uh, replicate, forming granulation, um, granulated tissue. Within two days after the fracture, um, uh, perial steel, um, steel cells will, uh, proximal to the fracture, gap developed into the 
chondroblast that forms a the hyaline cartilage. The periosteal cells distal to the fracture gaps into the developed osteoblast, which forms the woven bone. These two tissues grow into the same form, a new mass tissue. The, this is called the fracture callus, which eventually bridges the, um, the hyaline cartilage and the woven bone to restore part of the bone to, um, to its original strength. So as you see here, this is the fracture callus. As you can see here, the bone is trying to restructure itself. So it's causing all that, that um, how was it called? Um, I just read it. Um, as you see in here, it's it's starting to form a new mass to, it's, that's, that's trying to bridge the two pieces of bone together to bring it back to its original strength. Um, here's, um, all right, so here's what it looks like to have a complete repair of the humerus. So as you see here, you have a complete fracture to, um, to the right forearm. This is at the fifth week stage. Um, you do see some of that bridging. It's not very obvious, but you do see some. And then uh, at the 20th week, it grew. As you can see, the, the bridging is complete. It did reform the bone back to its original strength and retached itself together. All right, so the process here, so the when there was the, the endocardial um, um, ossification happens, um, occurs, this is the body replaces the cartilage and the woven bone with a um, trabecular uh, bone by uh, mineralization. The mineralized matrix is um, penetrating by, or sorry, penetrated by channels that contain microvessels and osteoblasts in the form of a trabecular bone. The trabecular um, is a spongy-like bone. It is very tiny, lettuce-shaped unit. The spongy bone is the site of the metabolic activity. It is a very highly vascular and is frequently performed, uh, performs, um, usually forms the, he uh, the, uh, the hematop uh, top poetic uh, functions. What this is, is just help, it, it helps transport blood throughout the bone structure so it can move around and blood too, so it can transfer red blood cells out of the bone structure. The spongy bone is then uh, replaced with um, compact bone. So here's the healing process. You got A, hematoma fo forms, then you got B, um, the hematoma is then filled with internal calluses, fibroid tissue, um, or cartilage. Uh, new bone vessel, um, blood vessels are formed, and the spone, and then you have right there on the outside, on the right side of it, you got the spongy bone, the beckles, uh, the becula. There you go, and then you also have the external cal. Um, Callus. So what happens is, as the bone is structured, it um, it becomes starts to harden as everything is formed. New blood vessels are regrow into each other, and once everything's set, it the the bony callus of the spongy bone starts to harden, and as it hardens, it heals the fracture, and basically tries to make the bone as hard as it once was. So the trabecular uh, bone is reabsorbed into by the osteoblasts. Uh, uh, the osteoblast um, creates a shallow pit in which the osteoblast deposits compacted bone. The fracture callus is removed into the sh um, new shape, closely depicted by the bone's original shape. The remodel takes in between three to five years to complete, depending on the patient's age and general health. Um, these are complex. These are different complications during healing. These are different complications that can happen due to delayed union. This can be caused by poor blood supply to the fracture site or infection. Um, 
non-union. This is be and this can be caused by the bones loss of um, bone loss or infection. Then you have fibrous union. This is the improper surgical repair, in, or incomplete or improperly realignment or poor improper fixation uh, or immobilization. The musculoskeletal system. So the mechanism of injury uh, for musculoskeletal injury. So. What happens is usually there's, uh, it depends on the direct force of the either penetrating or blunt force. Uh, it can be also, it all depends on the end. It can also be indirect injuries. Um, and also injuries can happen from a twisting motion. So first off is you need to do a good assessment. What you do is you look for pain, plower, uh, sorry, pallor, um, parath, uh, parath, um, thesis. Uh, pulses, pulses, paralysis, and also pe pressure feeling. So point tenderness. Um, you also want to look for guarding of the injury. Uh, check sensory and motor functions, and also pulses distal to the injury. So when we're talking about open or closed fractures, so what you need to do is closed fractures are usually contribute to internal vascular or nerve injuries. The muscle spasms surrounding the fracture caused bone endings to rub and um, lacerate soft tissue, including vascular structures, muscle, and soft tissue. They may lead to a fatty embolism. So open fractures may not appear to be open. Um, sometimes you may have a small lack in the skin, so uh, I don't know if they has a picture of it. Um, I don't know if that's going to be it or not. I'll look here in a second. So it may be due to the fracture occurs from inside to outside fractures. And also there is additional risk for infections and blood loss. So open fractures may always appear, appear as it look, small open fracture, or may always appear as an open laceration. So that almost looks like that's a person's lower leg. And I'm, so, I'm assuming he probably snapped his tib fib and part of the bone had shot through the skin and pulled itself back in, had retracted itself back in the skin. So it's going to present to you like a open, a, a, a huge laceration with deep tunneling. But uh, but ideally what this is, is this literally is just a laceration for where the skin had punctured, the, uh, sorry, the bone had punctured the skin and retracted itself back in when the leg came back to the, to the probably its normal anatomical position. Uh, here's a um, obvious, Open fracture. And that looks a lot like that dude's leg. I had it. A... Oh, I couldn't be his leg. This looks like a, a very familiar, like a like a, one of my patients I had. Uh, actually, no, that's a that's an arm. No, 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 that's a leg. Never mind. Um, I had a guy that had a picture that had like this. What had happened was is he had a he was helping his friend um, back up his uh, truck and his truck and trailer and he hit this uh pipe fence well the pipe went fence took off at him very very quickly so he went to go jump over the pipe well the pipe caught his ankle and it fractured his leg exactly like this so we got on scene we immobilized him and it was an open fracture so i you know i did my best to cover it up so keep from uh to keep from um getting extra dirt and everything inside the wound and the guy wanted me to take a bunch of pictures of his leg because he wanted to see what it looked like. So I took his phone, took pictures of it. And then um, he's like, oh, that's awesome and stuff like that. He's like, hey, you want a picture? So he sent me a picture of, of his leg. <laughs> um, I don't think that's that guy. but So this is a very obvious fracture. Um, also, musculoskeletal injuries can contribute to cause um, or, um, to or cause shock. So whenever we're looking at these different um, these different injuries, these different bones can cause this much bleeding. The, fe uh, the femur can cause up to 1,500 mLs of blood loss. Tibia, 1,000. Pelvis, 15 plus. You can actually hold the entire patient's blood supply in the pelvic cavity. The humerus, 750 mLs of blood loss, and so on. So special considerations in pediatrics. So fractures can involve uh, the epi epiphilus, um, the which is the growth plate, which can affect the development of the child's limb. Special care should be taken when, han when handling these type of these patients.
Um, so here's a, yeah, okay. So here's a fracture to the epi, of the epidel, of epi, epiphilius. Uh, um, as you see here, it looks like this is going to be. Yeah, I'm going to assume that's the knee. It looks like to be a, an X-ray of the knee right there. And as you see right there, he has a the damage happens to that growth plate. So what happens is it can actually cause. Um, all right, so bone grows upward from the white line. Okay, so as you see here, there, the, this is evolving part of the growth plate, so the patient may have abnormal bone growth to that leg. Uh, femur fracture. Yeah, I wouldn't say that one's pretty obvious. The last femur fracture I had la uh, two weeks ago, if y'all look at the top of the femur where it attaches to the pelvis, you have that little bitty um, notch that comes off the top of the femur. He actually tore a huge chip out of that and also part of the neck of the femur. So it wasn't a complete femur fracture, but it was definitely one that made his him the ability to walk very unstable. A uh, commuted tip fit fracture. That thing looks pretty shattered. Um, a collis fracture. Uh, it looks like the what had happened here is basically a fracture towards the top of the uh, forearm, and it's in the bone basically is sitting on top. Uh, displaced clavicle. As you see, the the clavicle has became disconnected from the from the upper right. Looks like the right shoulder. Open tip fib fractures. So this one right here is a pretty obvious open tip fib, as you can tell from the bone ending sticking about six to eight inches out of the out of the body itself. All right, musculoskeletal injury. So what first off we need to do is you want to secure uh, your ABCs, control external bleeding. Not necessarily in that order. You want to make sure you control all bleeding first, and then worry about ABCs. C, um, take C-spine precautions, stabilize the fracture site, immobilize above and below the fracture, check PMS quite frequently. You want to do IV O2 um, to main, you know, maintain at least 94, 95% and perform an EKG. Transport, check the distal function, sensation, and pulses frequently due to swelling. All right, so the select muscle skeletal injuries. Although strains, sprains, and debil um, are debilitating, they are usually not serious in the pre-hospital setting. More often, they can create situations where the patient is not able to ambulate or is in moderate pain. Care is directed at immobilizing the injury and transporting. But remember, elevation is no longer recommended for under the 2009 guidelines. However, check local protocols. Apply, um, and then, um, apply ice to keep um, swelling reduced. Check distal um, sensory motor functions and pulses and mobilize above and below the injury site. Check for bilateral um, symmetry with other limbs. Test to determine if mobility is normal or abnormal. Is, the, is a joint moved beyond its normal limits? We have two different types of dislocations here. We have a partial dislocation, which is called the subluxations. And then you have the luxa lux luxations, which is uh, a complete dislocation. So dislocation. Uh, typically, a lot of times, whenever somebody has, has an extremity that's dislocated, you usually have loss of limb function, deformity almost always present, immediate swelling, and joint tenderness. May have a, you know, may have a previous episode which weakened the joint. Um, you can also have a, um, you can also have a um, temporary. Uh, blocking of the circulatory system, which which can cause um, to things to be, com can compromise the pulsation, the pulse and the oxygen uh, supplies that's needed for that, for those extremities. So as you see here, here's a picture of a dislocated elbow. Uh, 
Uh, here's a dislocated knee. Uh, here's a dislocated thumb. Uh, dislocated shoulder. So as you noted on the right shoulder, you see a, a drop off. So the treatments for um, is for the uh, for the acro myoclavicular uh, joint is going to be a sling and swath. Elbows, what you would do is you want to spl splint in a position found if distal circulation is present. Wrists, use a padded board or a pillow splint with sling and swath. Hips, um, you want a position um, you want a position in position found with blankets or pillows for comfort. Um, some places carry the um, some some commercial devices like the um, pelvic sling or pelvic binder. Uh, typically, I'm old school. Another thing you could do for hip fractures, I've actually uh, found this to be interesting. I saw an article about it was patients that have a hip fracture or sorry, a pelvic fracture that's involving um, that, that they have long pants on. You can actually cut the pants straight down the legs and tie the <coughs> tie the pant legs together to cause. Oh, go away. I'm not talking to you. All right, so um, you can actually use the pant legs to uh, to help stabilize the pelvic knees. Uh, these are typically going to be usually a true emergency. You know, so what you need to present splint in the position found a less distal circulation um, compromise um, than anterior. Um, okay, so you, what you want to do is you want to look at. Um, what you want, you want to, oh, let me start over here, you want to uh, put in the position found, unless distal circulation is compromised, and then you want to try to realign the, the knee to have return to circulation. Um, ice to reduce swelling, and also you can pro um, provide some pain relief. All right, so compartment syndrome. This is usually defined from ischemia of soft tissue in the compartment of the extremity. So um, this is locally increased pressure, compromises local circulation and neuromuscular function. This usually occurs with crushed injuries and burns. Uh, with this way, what causes it is you're going to have a high, uh, tight casting as part of the fracture management. Um, occlusion of the arterial blood supply. You, this can happen with snake bites and rhabdomyolysis. Myolysis. Um, you can have um, severe limb pain. Uh, signs of should be severe limb pain, muscle compartment, extreme tightness, decreased sensation to touch, loss of distal circulation, and paralysis. Uh, treatment is going to be um, if you have a patient that has a casted extremity, what you want to do is remove the plaster cast, tight, uh, tight dressings or splints, elevate, um, which you do is you apply ice, rapid transport to appropriate facility, treat uh, for acidosis, um, apply or administer pain management, and also treatment for rhabdomyolysis. So random lysis is a rapid destruction of skeletal muscle tissue caused by leakage of the myoglobin, uh, which, is the, uh, which is a muscle protein into the bloodstream, which leads to kidney failure. Common causes are gonna be muscle trauma um, or crust injuries, burns, prolonged lying in bed, prolonged coma, prolonged seizure activity, hypothyroidism, myo, myopanthes, and then also snake bites. Um, other causes it could be extreme muscle activity, like running a marathon, drug or alcohol intoxication, um, low circulating phosphate, potassium, or magnesium, drowning accompanied by hypothermia, um, medications, a lot of your statin drugs like Zocor, Lipitor, um, Prevacor, or 
Mavicor. Um, psych medications can cause it. Anesthesia medications or anesthesia meds, HIV medications can cause it. And you can also have it from viral and some bacteria issues. So typically drugs accelerate the cause of rhabdomyosis. Uh, signs and symptoms is going to be myalgias, myalgia, uh, muscle weakness, red or a cola colored urine. So what the complications that typically happen are going to be kidney failure due to plugging of the kidneys of uh, kidneys nephrons by muscle protein. So what happens is all these bad proteins that are floating around the blood all rush to kidney at the same exact time. When this happens, this plugs up all the ducts that it needs for uh, filtering water out of, out of the circulatory system. So when this happens, this causes your kidneys to start to fail. Um, they can also cause compartment syndrome. You can have hyperkalemia. <laughs> okay, so you can have hyperkalemia and also hyperphosphatemia due to the content of muscle cells being released into the bloodstream. All right, so ortho orthopedic injuries pop which um, in the U.S., the majority of new amp um, amputations occur due to complications of the vascular system, especially from diabetes. A leg amputations are usually divided into two broad categories, minor, which includes amputation of the digits, partial amputation, uh, and ankle dis, um, disarm articulation, to major, which is going to be a below-the-knee amputation, uh, below knee, above the knee, knee. Oh, so give me a second. <coughs> D knee disarticulation um, art and also hip disart um, disarticulation. Uh, the common causes are going to be circulatory disorders, sepsis with necrosis, cancer, trauma, which the limbs is um, severely injured and cannot be saved. Trauma or traumatic amp amputations where the limb is partially or entirely severed as direct result of the injury. All right, so amputations are a traumatic experience. They can reduce the quality of life for most patients. The patients who have has an amputation experiences a psychological trauma as well as an emotional and physical discomfort. The stump becomes an area uh, of reduced mechanical stability and can present significant or even uh, drastic uh, practical limitation. The large portion of amputees, which is going to be about 50 to 80%, experience a phenomenon known as the phantom limb syndrome um, sensation, which they can still feel um, that body part um, that is no longer there. The phantom limb um, may ache or itch, ache, burn, feel wet, dry, locked in the uh, – this is all locked uh, or trapped or even as if it is moving. Once the biggest problem that, that an amputee faces is, uh, is going to be the adaptation of the, pro, um, the, pros, uh, the prosthesis device or prosthetic device. There we go. All right, so a truncated uh, limbs are generally capped with the with a latex sock and put into a socket. The socket is difficult to socket is difficult to wear uh, for more than a few hours a day because of sweating, pain caused by the pressure of the sock the socket, and also the um, heterotopic um, ossification. So heterotopic ossification is the side effect caused by the brain signaling the bone to grow instead of forming a scar tissue. The bone grows um, nodules um, and jagged bone, uh, which interferes with the prosthes prosthetic device, as well as require further surgical uh, surgery to correct. 
This type of bone growth is especially common in soldiers wounded by an IED. Um, after a decade of research, two veterans um, are participating in a cutting edge clinical trial that may reinvent the use of prosthetics. In December 2015, two military veterans were the first amputees to receive an implanted device to replace their prosthetic legs. <laughs> so these devices are called POPs, a, the, the, per, the, the percutaneous osseointegrated um, osseo prosthesis. The POP implanted, um, the POP implanted uh, eliminates the need for a socket by surgically inserting a titanium rod into the patient's femur uh, before attaching a docking station uh, to the new limb. There is no waiting period for the implant. Um, it is surgically implanted immediately after the amputation and directly into the femur. So here's a picture of that device. All right, during research um, to invent the POP, a Swedish engineer who has implanting the titanium rod into the femur of a rabbit found that once implanted within a short period of time, it is impossible to remove the rod without destroying the surrounding bone. The femur, which is a hollowed out, uh, which is hollowed out for insertion of the rod, grows into, it, uh, grows into the titanium rod, making the rod an extension of the femur. Um, there is another um, side effect to make the pop even more valuable, which is the, the titanium infuses with the bone, and doing so, it connects with the user mind, um, user's mind via neural pathways to promote near normal performance as well as improved psychological acceptance. The patients can actually feel the surface so they, um, so they are standing on. The prosthetic uh, device becomes an actual extension of their body. The patients can sense through an artificial leg that um, what type of subfloor they are standing on. All right, so Ed Sal Salua is one of the two veterans who have received the, the POPs uh, state, uh, stated that I can feel the ground. I haven't. Uh, felt the sensation in 11 years. Sitting here, I could feel the slightest um, indication of a towel beneath my feet. In addition uh, to the increased awareness of the pr um, pro prioception, the POP offers, it's, um, it also has advantages of better range of motion. A typical prosthetic uh, device can only move from front to back. The pop prosthesis can pivot from side to side as well as front to back. Once the initial pop implant has fused to the bone, the prosthetic device is attached and the patient can immediately walk. Um, they generally need very little physical therapy. So here's the implantation of one of the pop devices. So as you see, the femur as it's comparing the, the right leg versus the left leg. As you see, they take that device, they implant it into the femur itself, and then they are able to attach a, the pop device directly to that, to that bone. Pictures of the, of the pop devices. 